And they got this little domino logo on these golden chopsticks. I just want to carry those chopsticks around to like Izakaya. I know, just get them out. Yeah. And just like, excuse me, let me get prepared and just like pull out your golden chopsticks and put them down. Welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch. My co-host. Alex, hello. How are you, Alex? Yeah, I'm good. I'm all right. Pretty good. You're going somewhere, right? Uh, I'm going to Tokyo tomorrow and then Nara the day afterwards um, and all over the place. Wakayama. I just went to Tokyo twice. Wait, when is this going to air? This is going to air. Okay, so you guys will know. Wait, when is this airing? Today, if I feel like editing it today. Okay, guys. It is airing today. Uh, tomorrow on, let's give you some actual dates here on, sun. I don't know what day that would be. How to express this. It, it, uh, <laughs> Monday morning at 12 AM Tokyo time. What? It's that Monday morning at 12 AM. Maybe give a date. So what day is Monday? It says the 20th, 21, 22nd. So on the round, the 22nd Tokyo time. Yeah. Uh, if you guys go visit Tokyo lenses, uh, youtube channel Mm -hmm. you'll see a very interesting video with me and mr norm not not the old one that we're in the camping car the new one right okay that we just finished we just i just got back from tokyo like four five six seven seven days ago six days ago we wrapped uh filming on that and so that should be really fun did you have a good time yes Mm. it was a it's a very uh, I'm looking for a, a word here. I'm trying because it's coming. This is gonna go up a day before, so I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, what is the word? Let the cat out of the bag. Just go check it out. It's gonna be fun. Um, but yeah, then I went to, to Fukuoka, Fukuoka right after that. All right, okay. Came back from Tokyo, went to Fukuoka, drove around Fukuoka for like a weekend, and came yeah, back. Yeah, I saw that. Just you, you texted me and said, "Do you want anything from IKEA or Costco? Let me know by 11." And you didn't. No, I don't want anything. Why? Because I don't need another one Dude, uh, recently. I so. just went to get Ikea. But you just, you just built yourself a new office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hate Ikea now. Why? You know, well, when you order it, it's nice. When it arrives, you think, oh, God, you build it all. <laughs> and then it's the, what do you call it? Sunk, not sunk cost. It's called, um, maybe it is the sunk cost thing. You Because you build it, you value it more afterwards. Oh, yeah. Right? It's not sunk cost, but there, yeah, that's a, it's the Ikea psychological thing. Because you made it yourself, so you value it more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. IKEA is one of the least uh, customer-friendly companies in the world, you know. Why? Because the locations are always miles away, so you've got to drive Well, they're big forever. is why. I've not finished yet. Oh, sorry. When you get to the store, you have to walk around in a set pattern past literally everything yeah. instead of going straight to what you want. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to order it if you can manage to order it because everything's out of stock all the time. And then it turns up at your house and you've got to build it yourself. So it's not customer-centric, is it? It's... Um, well, for the price point, it's very customer centric. True, it's not that cheap though. To be fair, you it's know, cheaper than other places that you know provide you know, decent. Furniture years ago, them. they were actually like t- thinking about making uh, IKEA manufacturing plants in a, in the United States, right? Be- because the the labor is so cheap there. Oh, I see. They were saying because there's like states in the United States that have like minimum wage that are like just crazy cheap. And also immigrants from Northern Europe. So that's also good. The Germans. And, the Germans, um, yeah. Well, yeah. the places that they'd probably make a, uh, a factory for IKEA would not be where the Germans are in America, probably. No, I imagine they're doing quite well. Probably closer to the southern border of everything. Right, but, I see. I mean, because like, they build Toyotas in Mexico. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get around some tariff with doing that. Maybe that's gone now because like, NAFTA's gone, but like, they got around some tariff by building cars half in Mexico and half in the United States. But it's all, t- it's all Toyota and Honda mm. and stuff like that, but... It depends where the key component is, doesn't it, or something like that. Yeah, it's all these little weird laws about stuff like that. So what are you doing in Tokyo? Uh, I'm staying in Tokyo for a night, and then I'm leaving at 7 a.m. the next morning. That to sounds go like to, a fun time. Yeah, to go to Wakayama and then do, do some, some advi- advisory thing. Advisory work. You just got back from uh, a trip to Amami Oshima, which is one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, and you had a kind of... 
I don't want to say disparaging, but I'm going to say kind of not over. You weren't you weren't incredibly taken aback with joy about your experience in Amami Oshima. No, I mean, like I, I I'm not going for pleasure. It wasn't a pleasure trip. It was a research a, trip. A research and you know business trip. But um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of problems there. You know, it's a beautiful place, lovely people, great culture. Um, but there are some issues that need to be sorted out if they want, you know, tourists to come and visit. More and more mainstream tourists and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, less. It's more like numbers, basically, and you know, sustainability. Yeah. Um, you know, environmental issues. For you guys that don't know, this is actually what Alex does for a living. Like he does travel and tourism stuff like that. Yes, I'm an expert. He's not the, just a co-host on, on this on this show. <laughs> I do have a proper job. <laughs> he's, got, yeah. he's got two proper jobs actually. Yeah, several jobs. Josh, yeah. did you find out what that IKEA th- principle is called? It might be the sunken cost fallacy where you put time into something and so you, you don't want to give up on it. Could be. I don't think it's that there's another one about value. There's a guy called Adam Ferrier, I think, or something like that, Australian guy. And he wrote a book about why you should never listen to the customer, which is quite good. Just That's actually not out. bad. Uh, there is this principle. Dude, I, I'm forgetting English these days. There is a principle in business that I cannot remember. That for the I tried Googling and I cannot remember. So if you guys at home know what this is, please tell me in the comments. But there's a, there's two types of products in the world. There's like, I think it's called value added products or something like that. And the, basically it's, it's an iPhone versus Coca-Cola mm-hmm. uh, iPhone. It makes sense to manufacture the entire thing in one place and then ship it whole mm-hmm. to its final market. Whereas Coca-Cola, it makes sense to make only the syrup right at the manufacturing place and then mix it in a bottling, uh, like, you know, facility on location yeah. at the destination country mm-hmm. because it doesn't make sense to ship the water to a place where there's already water. Right, right. The water component of a Coca-Cola. So these two types of different products, there's like names for this, but I couldn't remember for the life of me. Mm. All of my college days, forgetting them slowly. What's it? What is it? It's just called the IKEA effect. Good. Yeah, it's branded. <laughs> branded well. You know. You know, they they I went there right a couple of days ago. They have like their own Legos. They're like they're like knockoff Seriously. Legos. Jesus. I'm like, you know, if because... Mind you, I, I did buy a uh, six-pack of hot dogs. From Ikea? Yeah, uh, frozen ones or whatever I took home. And also some mashed potato, I think. Just make mashed potatoes. See, by the time you've gone around, you think, oh, God, I've got to buy something. You know, <laughs> And like, I went to just look at the furniture and order it online later on. But because I'd gone all the way up there and, you know, sat on a bunch of stuff and lied on it or whatever, I, I just thought, you know, I need to take something back with me. So the only good so, thing about the knockoff IKEA uh, Legos is that they come in a box that is also a Lego. And what's it called? The name of it? Is it I some don't know. stupid they, name? All of their products are named after some like Nordic word or name or something. They're, they've got a naming convention, you know, for like rivers in Norway or something like that for certain things and towns in Sweden for certain other things. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I looked into this in detail after <laughs> I went to Ikea and ordered a bunch of stuff. You were so frustrated with your experience that I have to know more about this company. I must know everything about Ikea. Uh, one of my good friend's father was like a like a warehouse manager and like he helped like actually bring Ikea to America. Oh, really? He's retired now. He's, I think he's loaded. But like, yeah, he, he told me so much like tracking signal. I didn't know this concept of tracking signal mm. and all this other stuff that he would talk to me about. I was just like, tell me more. It's so interesting. I've forgotten it all, though. Well, the name is Ikea, isn't it, really? That's the actual pronunciation. In Japan, they call yeah. it Ikea. Yeah, yeah, because they've got the phonetic writing right. Yeah, we're just, kinda... we're just dumb. We're like, Ikea. Let's call it whatever I like. Yeah. If I'm going to assemble it myself, I'm going to make the name myself. The, ja- well. the Japanese uh, katakana for foreign words, like, it's hit or miss. It either gets it perfect or it's all over the place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So can't always rely on that. My least favorite katakana is related to a story later on, actually. Naita. I hate that word. Naita? Naita. What's that? It's a night baseball game. A baseball game that's played at night. It's called Naita. And it's so irritating. Night tournament? Is that what it is? What does it mean? I don't know. Naita. That's what I mean. It's like somebody thought it up and thought it was really clever, obviously, at the time. And that irritates me, the image of that person's I, smug face. I, I feel <laughs> when you called me, when you said to me, Naita, like somebody's crying, like somebody crying. No, look it up, Naita. Yeah, it's a night baseball game. Yeah, there you go. Night game. Naito, Naita. 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 It's... I, I loathe that niter. word. Niter. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it comes from like niter. Niter. Oh, God. Is niter a word? I don't know. It's not a word. I don't know anything about baseball. We're going to soon find out more about how I don't know anything about baseball when we get to the news. But yeah, let's get into it. 
All right. All right. So our first story today is going to be about the pandemic, as they always are. But this is actually very interesting. Um, this comes from the Japan Times, and they're trying to figure out why there's such a rapid decline of COVID cases in Japan. Like, I think today Tokyo tested seven positive cases of COVID mm -hmm. versus like the UK, the United States, which is like thousands every day still. Um, and they're trying to figure out why. I still firmly believe that they came up with the cure for the pandemic, which was that election that they had a couple weeks ago. <laughs> just if you need if you need to cure a cure a pandemic, just get an election going. Um, but this article actually uh, they suggest that it might be because, and it kind of makes a little bit of sense here. Um, basically, for the last year or so, like the last half year or so, the only Delta variant that's really been showing its face in Japan has been the, uh, no, sorry, the only COVID variant that has been showing its face in Japan recently has been the Delta variant. Mm. So like the, the original strain and like the, whatever the other ones are, they're, they aren't really showing up. Um, and they, the, the reason why a lot of scientists think that this is happening is because those strains are mostly prevented by social distancing measures, including mask wearing and ventilation, things like that. Whereas the Delta, Delta variant is so highly contagious that even through those, those social, you know, uh, distancing measures, it was still spreading mm -hmm. as it was spreading crazily in Japan. Uh, two things were happening. One, the vaccines were getting rolled out faster and faster. I think now we're at 75.7 percent of all of residents are fully vaccinated, which is good. Uh, and they're going to actually lower the uh, availability of vaccines to like five year olds coming in February or something like that. Really? Mm -hmm. So like we're going to get more and more vaccination. But that's a big part of it. The other thing is that the scientists actually think that the uh, Delta variant just like mutated itself into self extinction extinction right okay so like it mutated so much that it stopped being like a viable virus so it couldn't replicate it couldn't replicate anymore so like it'd get into somebody and mutate and then just die mm. is one of the actual like and there's a lot of like a p o b e c three a something 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 that's all this stuff in here it's a lot of science that i don't <laughs> pretend to really understand but basically that was yeah. like the 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 gist of it is like they think that it just kind of like self eradicated itself that's what happened in 1919 uh, with the spanish flu right okay it just became it mutated to like a less deadly v a variant of itself and then people just forgot about it well for the virus you see it it's n need is to just spread right mm. as a as an organism or whatever as a a, a, a thing or whatever yeah a non-dead non-living organ organism so if it kills everybody it's not really doing its job well, is it? So it's going to have to kind of peter out a little bit. But the thing, the thing is, is viruses don't have a like, a like a cognitive center. They don't make any decisions. They're just existing. They're just like random data that floats around in our world. And then they f screw up our cells, RNA and DNA. That's all they do. Mm. Right. So they don't they can't think or move or do anything. But there must be some natural selection going on. Well, because it weeds itself out because if it kills everything, it's gone. Right. Yeah. Right. Fire sale. Is that mm. what that's called? All right, let's go on to the next story. All right, so we've got a bit of a complicated one here. The ousted former leader of Myanmar, uh, Su Kyi's, uh, got a Japanese sword. Um, and apparently it was passed to a, a craftsman in Japan um, for polishing uh, before she was kind of ousted from the government. Um, so the sword was um, handed to the Jap Japanese ambassador to Myanmar, uh, Ichiro Maruyama. Um, and then he found somebody at the Nippon Foundation that could go away and polish that for, uh, sword up and get it fixed. So they took it to uh, Setoichi in Okayama, which is a kind of an area that's famous for sword polishing. Um, and since then, you know, the craftsmen haven't heard from Suki since she disappeared in February and got arrested and are kind of concerned about her welfare. Yeah, now. there's like a lot of stories about people disappearing like that. As a tennis player in China, mm -hmm. she, that's was, right. she yeah, got too big that. and like the Chinese government just disappeared her all Jack Ma style. Yeah, yeah. Jack Ma, what happened to him? Yeah, he got he got released. Like, Did he? Yeah, and then like all of his companies got to be have to be broken up now, and you know all all the uh, all the mandates from the the government because basically they don't want the Silicon Valley happening in China. Right. Okay. They don't want the p private sector to become more powerful than the pub the the government. But I saw a, a talk between Jack Ma and Elon Musk once oh, on YouTube. It's, it's hilarious. And Jack Ma is a fucking idiot. Yeah, I mean, he really is. He's he's a lucky idiot though. Yeah, yeah. What did he say in that talk? In that talk, he's like, you can't possibly calculate some very calculable like <laughs> yeah. number. Yeah. And Elon Musk is just sitting next to him. He's like, this is what you guys got is like your representation of genius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but this is my, my, uh, my, my yeah, I can't even say it. Man, say, say the country name. Mal uh, Mi Myanmar. Myanmar. There you go. Myanmar, formerly I'm, Burma, right? Yeah, I'm not good with some words. They just don't come out. 
No, um, Myanmar's a hard one to say, to be fair. But apparently this sword was a, a gift from the president of a major Japanese newspaper, Asahi Shimbun, uh, during World War II mm. to a, an army general uh, called Ida. Um, and he was commanding the Japanese forces in Burma, and it was later passed on to uh, General Aung San, who was a uh, hero of Myanmar's independence movement, and also uh, Su Kyi's father. So it came down through the family, uh, and now it's in Japan getting polished up again. Well, you know, it's I hate to say it, but it's kind of good that she left it in their care because, you know, who, who knows what would happen to it, you know. But I hope she's okay. I hope, she, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, who knows what's going I on. I mean, she's but... been basically disappeared since, I think, the coup, right? So Yeah, it says February here, so yeah. Um, yeah. But she's been in and out of house arrest and things like that for many years, right? You know, so it's a difficult situation. Yeah, it's, but... it's, it's, yeah. But hopefully the sword will be restored and hopefully find itself back to the rightful owner, owner who is hopefully A-OK. And she if she it. doesn't need it, I'll take it. So... <laughs> No uh, problem. Guys out there, if you guys are interested in stuff like Samurai Swords and things like that, um, actually, if you guys subscribe to our other channel that uh, we make under the prefecture of Kagoshima, uh, called People of Kagoshima, uh, soon we'll be releasing a very interesting interview with a gentleman who has collected millions of dollars worth of Samurai Swords. Mm, yeah, it's a really interesting interview, right? He's a... Uh, He's 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 a rare cookie. Yeah, swords and guns as well. He likes his like we rifles. We too. showed up. He's like holding a gun, not like a like a action star, like action movie gun, but like a traditional old musket looking yeah. gun. Yeah. He's just like waving around. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <It's not> loaded. <laughs> the thing is, with older guns like that, it's easy to tell if they're about to go off because there is generally some kind of fire attached to yeah, it, right? right? You know, it's not like it's just gonna go off. But it's like the first time I've actually seen a gun that's not an airsoft gun in Japan. Right, I'm like, true, yeah. is that okay? He's like, yeah, it's fine. I'm yeah, like, okay, yeah. well. Yeah. So. Guns are not actually illegal in Japan. Are they not? No, they're the they're, same thing in your country. Mm. Guns are actually not illegal in the UK. You can get them. They're just really, really hard to get. Oh, no, like you need a hunting license, right? Yeah, yeah. In, yeah so there's hunters in Japan that actually, uh, they kill like uh, Inoshishi boar yeah, yeah, and yeah. things like that. And they, some of them turn them into the local government for money. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. they're pests. Well, actually, in Amami Oshima as well, they uh, catch habu, the snakes. Yeah. And if you give one into the local government, you get 3,000 yen. They used to get Ichima yen, uh, 10,000 yen, 100 US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently, with like, you know, shortages and everything, it's like it's three, 30 bucks. Right, yeah. So you'll be driving in a taxi, right? And then the taxi driver will just stop, get a little stick from the trunk, <laughs> yeah. walk around and hit the, the snake on the head, put it in a bag and just, like keep yeah. going. Didn't they do the same thing in India with like, cobras but then they started farming the cobras and they stopped paying people because is that right i think sounds, so that sounds probable I, I was gonna say anybody living in amami good business idea catch I'm just writing few. that down now <laughs> <laughs> to make sure add that to your report about amami yes. <laughs> snake farm snake farm jeez. all right let's uh let's continue uh we got this is this sounds kind of dark but i want to go over this story because like it's going to surprise a lot of you people at home watching this so there's a lawsuit that's been enacted uh, against the Japanese government because what happens... Uh, so Japan has the death penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do something really, really egregious uh, and you're convicted of it, uh, then you do face a death penalty. And the death penalty is... Uh, uh, the execution uh, method is hanging. So not electric chair, not lethal injection, none of that stuff that maybe more modern countries do. Really more modern countries should just not do the death penalty at all, but whatever. Uh, in Japan, it's death by hanging. Mm. Um, and this lawsuit is over this one practice that they have that's been in place since 1975. And it's they don't tell you when they're going to hang you until about an hour before they hang you. Really? Yeah. That seems incredibly inhumane. So there now the lawsuit says that it's exceptionally cruel and it doesn't give the uh, the 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 convicted uh, time to like inform their loved ones or whatever like basically prepare for their death. Um, but the the reason why this policy was put into uh, practice is because they whoever made it believed that uh, it gives the prisoners a peace of mind because they never know when it's going to happen, so they don't worry about the day. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're like on a train station and you stood ne waiting for your train and you don't know when it's going to come, you're more irritated than if there's a sign that says it's going to be here in 10 minutes, right? I think you and I are like that, yeah. Yeah, I think anybody would be like that. So I can imagine with your own death, it might be a similar situation. This is from the country, guys, that if you are a grown-ass adult 
Like, let's say you're 50 years old. You've got terminal cancer. You go get a complete workout and your doctor knows, all right, this dude's dead. He's got a day to live. In a lot of cases, the doctor chooses not to tell the patient. I don't get Who does he tell? The wife or whatever, the mom, you know, whoever, some relatives. And then the relatives decide whether or not they tell the patient. Hmm. And it's just like, wait, wait, I would want to fucking know if I'm about ready to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tell my wife. Screw her. She doesn't need to know that <laughs> she, shit. She doesn't need to know. <laughs> like, why? And, and this is like, I, I was interviewing a doctor about this, and this doctor was like, that is the most humane thing to do. Don't tell the patient that they're going to die. I'm like, you better fucking tell me if I'm going to die. I know. Yeah, I had an MRI recently for some, I can't remember what it was for. I had a headache or something, so I went and got an MRI. And for anger yeah, issues. He looked at my head, my brain. And he goes, that's a very nice brain. And that's all he said. So I was just like, yeah, thanks. Was, was he touching you on the shoulder when he said that? Uh, he was looking me directly in the eye. Hannibal Lecter style? Uh, not not in an eating kind of way. <laughs> More like a, an ad, like a centerfold brain type of oh, way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I don't know, guys. If you, uh, if you at home have an opinion on this, please comment in the comment, sec- in the comment section. If you are on death row... First of all, I don't think countries should be killing people. So let's just get my political stance out there. But if you were on death row, would you want to be told the day or would you want to be told, you know, the day like well in advance so you could prepare for it? Or do you just want them to like come knock on your door and be like, get yourself ready. 30 minutes to go. Let's go. Showtime. You know, when they actually hang people, there's like trap doors on the floor. They stand them on the trap door and there's three buttons on the wall and three people press the button at the same time. So they don't know who actually activates the trap door. It's random. The uh, the, the actual answer is they all are attached to the trap door. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why they do this, the firing squad with one blank, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let's just stop killing people, even if they are really, really bad. Um. So anyway, let us know in the comments, like what you're feeling on this one. First of all, hanging, the way that you die from hanging is not from uh, asphy- asphyxiation. It's from breaking your neck. Yeah. The force of you like slamming into the rope breaks your neck and that's how you die. Mm. Uh, so this is really gross. But like, you know, like when back in the day when they would hang just anybody, like children took the longest time to die because they would actually have to asphyxiate them. Right. I see. So just you know stop let's not do this anymore japan it just doesn't seem like a cool thing to do luckily they're they don't really kill a lot of people so that's good whatever let's take this a little more upbeat now <laughs> and, uh talk about domino's pizza you didn't want to jump jump into otani oh let's go for otani then next all right this is actually a really good story uh so otani if you guys don't know this mr otani mr shohei otani uh was uh is in los angeles uh, los angeles angels he's an mvp uh m what is it? Major L M L B player. I told you I don't know anything about baseball. Uh, and anyway, he was just uh, he was just voted unanimously uh, as MVP in uh, as one of 19 people who got the u- u- uh, unanimous votes to be a uh, the MVP for the year. I guess. Yeah. He's like basically like you said it before. But he's like the Babe Ruth of like current. Oh, totally, man. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I don't really know much about baseball, but I see it on the news because my kid likes you know baseball and stuff. Um, but he got like 30 votes, like unanimous votes of sports people, journalists yeah. Yeah, in the US. Um, and yeah, he's like, you can bat, you can pitch, you know, you can do the whole works. And one of the reporters this morning, like an American guy was going, um, yeah, I've seen Babe Ruth, you know what I mean? But he wasn't around in our lifetime to see somebody like that now who's also, you know, 6'4 and like super athletic. It's a completely different thing. So they're saying he's like a... a generation changing uh, you know level player so i mean i don't really follow baseball but i do kind of respect him obviously for that i mean like he was you know born raised here went over there played you know it's like and he he got mvp he's, he's, he's on the top right so one thing i would say is that like he needs to embrace american culture a bit more because like he was being interviewed and he was just going oh yeah i'm very grateful to the fans in japanese i'm very grateful to the fans yeah What's it's that, like we want to say a bit more. Yeah, come on. What's yeah. that crazy dude that played for like the Dolphins or something? I forgot his name. I think he's from Kagoshima actually. And he just tries to speak English, but nobody knows what the hell he's ah, saying. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember some guy that uh, Tani. Some, no. Yeah, I forgot his name, but he's no. great. A- any interview with him, it always just makes his way on Reddit. Yeah. Okay, so I, I gotta I gotta mention what going along with what you just said when he was interviewed. Like, how are you going to celebrate? His his answer was, I don't have any special plans actually. Wow. 
I'm probably going to spend a lonely night by myself at home. Jesus. What's that mean? Oh, Tony, go get lit, man. Do something fun. Just live your life, bro. Well, Maybe... He's probably so good at baseball because he's kind of like... Only doing baseball? Just doing baseball, you know what I mean? There's a bunch of stats in here that I would read, but I would sound stupid because I don't know what any of them mean. But he's just amazing, apparently. He's good with the bat and the ball. They call it nitoryu in uh, Japan. They call it switch... What did he call it here? It sounded kind of bisexual, actually, when I read it. I'm not going to lie. Nitoryu means it does mean bisexual as well, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I forgot what the switch player or something like that. I don't know. If you guys know, two-way superstar is what they call them. A two-way superstar. Two-way superstar does sound... I can't stop. Yeah. Sorry. From Death Row to Otani. Don't do that. We got to do Domino's last. I like Domino's. Domino's. Domino's has got to go last. Here, do this one. It's just relevant for me. You got it. We got to do Domino's last. All right. Japan's allowing more people into uh, the country uh, under eased COVID restrictions. So they're going to allow 5,000 people into the country compared to the current uh, limit that was uh, before 26th of November uh, of 3,500 people a day. Um, and there's going to be some enhanced screening at airports. Uh, Narita, for example. Um, and only business people, students, technical interns are allowed in at the moment. Let me ask you this question, Alex. So we've basically gone, what, a, almost two years now without any international travel? Yeah. Right? Um, how do you think we're going to go from that to starting back up again? Uh, for tourism, for yeah, business. for tourism. Well, so there's a couple of stages to go through, right? So the South China Morning Post phoned me up the other day okay. for an interview about this. Um, so I d did tell them my opinion. Um, whether it's accurately quoted or not, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but basically, you know, business travelers coming in first. A, a lot of people in the business community aren't happy about this. So the um, Chambers of Commerce of the US, Britain, Australia, uh, Canada, put out a joint statement recently saying that um, the three-day quarantine is better than the state before yeah but there's so much paperwork involved in it and you've got to track everybody's movements afterwards as well that it's still a huge barrier to entry mm -hmm. and foreign countries have already implemented systems where people can move into the countries more easily yeah so japan's seen as being isolationist and we need to sort it out uh. so they offered a complaint to the government about that um and i kind of understand you know where they're coming from but at the same time, you know, COVID cases are down here. Mm. Um, domestic travel is a huge market for Japan. It's 20 trillion yen a year. What do you know the ratio to domestic versus foreign? It's it's larger domestic, right? Yeah, it's about 70, 30. Yeah. So inbound tourism, people visiting Japan is about 4.5 trillion yen in mm -hmm. 2019. Um, so it's a growing segment and it's really important for Japan's because future. Pre-pandemic, the federal government was pushing hard to do like triple or quadruple the amount of like uh, uh, inbound tourism by 2025 or something like that. Yeah, so it's uh, 40 million by 2020 and 60 million by 2030. Oh, okay. So, you know, huge increase. Yeah. So 30 million people about came in 2019. So they want to double that, right? 60 million. Yeah. Do we have the capacity for that? Uh, technically, yes, but it depends on where those tourists go. If they're all concentrated in the golden route destinations, Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, it's going to be very, very difficult to accept that many people. Dude, Kyoto was a mess before the pandemic. I didn't yeah, want to go terrible. there. Yeah, it was terrible. No, it was awful. So I went to uh, Shimi Naritaisha, um, one of the shrines there, uh, you know, with all the shrine gates lined up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I walked, you know, about halfway up to the main shrine and just thought, oh, sod this, I can't be bothered. It's like tourists pulling the suitcases behind them, selfie sticks everywhere. It was horrible. That's the one thing that they really had a problem with is like, I don't know why it happens, but a lot, especially the, the, the Chinese tourists, they, they go around with their suitcases. I think it's the, the way that the tours are made or something like that. Yeah, maybe. And so they're going to all these shrines and everything, like pulling their suitcases and various like goods that they bought. And it's just like, there's just no room. Yeah. So... So you need to reduce the amount of people that can go into those destinations and also spread travel out to regions as well. So yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. I'm working on at the moment in, in many different fronts. So. so getting back to the original question though, like do you, mm. do you see us reopening? Do you see us like, I mean, we're being kind of isolationist now. Well, there's no roadmap. That's the problem. So basically what's going to happen is, in, in my view, there'll be small tests probably. I, I heard from another person that there would be a small test in December mm -hmm. for inbound tourism. Uh, and then there'll be the, probably the go-to travel campaign, the Japanese government's campaign to stimulate domestic tourism. That's domestic, right? Yeah. yeah. That will go first because they need to get these local people 
Japanese people moving around first. Yeah. Right? Um, and then after that, uh, inbound tourism probably start in March. We'll see. Um, I mean, it is better to start inbound in a summery, warmer month than it is, you know. Yeah, I mean, now's off season, right? So there's no rush, really. Mm -hmm. But all the people involved in inbound travel are very, very uncertain about what's going to happen to the future. This is all businesses, though. I mean, we're yeah. I, again, I, I own an Aikawa school in addition to owning this, this production company. But, like, we've been waiting for a Canadian teacher to come in. We hired him in January. It yeah. is fucking November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. sitting on his ass, just waiting to come into the country. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. And, um, you know, there's a huge trickle, even just with tourism itself, there's a trickle down effect to lots of different industries. So yeah. people get in a, a taxi, for example, they pay the taxi driver, but he also needs gasoline. You know, somebody needs to work at that gasoline stand to provide it. You know, it filters out to many, many different industries. Um, and that potential economic boost is not getting to anybody at the moment. Which and right is a now, bad thing. the government is really propping up a lot of like vacant sectors of the economy using whole joking um, subsidies, federal subsidies, but they can't do that forever. That's true. And 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 if they keep doing that, we're going to have the same kind of problems that we're having in, in the United States right now with rapid inflation. Yeah. And if that happens in this country, we don't really know what rapid inflation is going to do to Japan because Japan's been kind of economically weird where they had a deflation, which no one understands deflation. <laughs> if you actually research deflation, everybody, every economist is like, we think deflation yeah. is this, but we don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, they're going to use bonds, right? To yeah. fund um, the, the stimulus, fund another huge stimulus package. Um, and it's like giving, you know, 10 man i don't know what that is in dollars a um, thousand bucks thousand bucks to kids fam, kids basically right <laughs> with uh, an annual salary of under nine million yen so it's like less than like you know a hundred uh, ninety thousand dollars a year if the joint income between the parents is less than ninety thousand dollars a year for every child that they have that's 18 and under they get a thousand dollar stimulus check and what are they going to do with that well, I hope they come and spend on the A. Kaiwa school that I own. What a good idea. <laughs> Let's learn English and support the inbound tourism market, which I work in. So it's a nice circle of circle of funds. Well, no, it is. It all it all it all works as an economy, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But honestly, if we don't, I mean, just on the professional travel alone, okay, we not having the ability to come in and out of the country on business alone is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're starting that up, which is good. But like inbound tourism, if it doesn't start back up, I mean, I get it. There's there's risk. There's always risk involved. But, you know, with the vaccines and with, you know, proper social distancing and measures in place, we can do it. Mm. You well, know, what's needed is a roadmap. That's all yeah. that's needed. Just say we're going to aim for this date. You know, it may change depending on circumstances. But, you know, the best course of action would be to plan for this time. And that will allay a lot of fears that everybody's got at the moment. Yeah. But without that, it just seems like we're not being trusted or look, looked after properly. We do is... we do need leadership. And hopefully the new prime minister, whatever his name is, will do a better job. <laughs> Kishida, right? <laughs> Kishida. Whatever. Kishida's not. Yeah. I don't know. He's so forgettable, man. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. All right. So we've got one more story, a bit of a light one this time. No, no, no. Wait. Before that one, then let me do I this I just one. want to do the dominoes, the, man. Let me, let me do this last one. Then you can, we could end on the dominoes. All right. So we got, we got a, it seems like every week we've got a JR st uh, story. Okay. You love JR, man. I actually, I actually think JR is a really well run company. I respect them a Which lot. Which one? Well, the five of them or whatever they are. But in, in general, JR, I think is very, very well run. I think that they have a lot of really good culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the people, especially the conductors that work for JR or most train companies in Japan are like, like otaku level serious about their jobs. Oh yeah. 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 And so I really, really appreciate the train system in this country. Love it. Okay. Right. My, my thing with the trains here is, right, the trains are brilliant. They come on time. They're clean, fast, effective. They do everything you would want them to do. You know, they turn up at the station and stop within, you know, centimeters of a line on yeah. the platform so you can get in where you want to get in. But you can't book the fucking things because an internet application is so awful. Oh. It's absolutely terrible. The best way to book, yeah, the best way to book a, a, a train seat is to go to a train station and book it from a counter. Yeah. No, it's still like yeah. that. In England, you can book it via an app. You get a QR code straight away, credit card payment, takes seconds, go to the station, your train's fucking late, and it's covered in piss. So, <laughs> this just goes to show... Have, you can't win. <laughs> this just goes to show exactly what Japan is really, really good at. Japan is brilliant at engineering, mechanical engineering. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that has movable parts that uses copper or steel uh, or uses semiconductors, they're really, really... Not semiconductors, but capacitors. They're really good at anything like that. Mm. They're absolute shit once it comes to software. Yeah, yeah, the software sec sucks. Second, man. you need to get something. That's what you're talking about, like booking tickets online or something. Once it's software, they can't do it. It's out. 
Like just outsource that to the Americans. Yeah. No yeah. one makes software like California. <laughs> true. That's true. Enough. Um, anyway, so let's get to this. Thing. Okay, so Shinkansen is a bullet train here in Japan. Um, and this Shinkansen conductor was caught playing a GPS smartphone game on, on bullet train. He was, he was, as he was driving this train, and he'd been ch- uh, playing it for 10 years. <laughs> the way that this guy got caught is fucking hilarious. So this is a, some sort of competitive game where you're ranked. They didn't name the game in any of the media. Is it Pokemon Go? It's not. What this game apparently is based upon is like how far you travel and that ranks Cheating. you in this game, like visiting various places, like right. gets you a certain like ranking. Right, right. Another player got fucking angry about this because this dude, he was, he, I guess the other player just had to figure out or calculate that this guy had to be on a Shinkansen to get all these. So he was looking at the places he was visiting. Right. And then aligned that with a map of the Shinkansen. And he's like, this guy's got to be like crew on a Shinkansen train. And he went and found him. No. And he outed him to the, he, uh, this, the message came. It appears that someone like a Shinkansen driver or conductor was playing a location-based game on 6th November. Oh, right. Right. That's the only message, right? So then JR, because JR is super anal, gets on like this huge like detective you know, mode and they try to figure out who's... And they find the guy. And the guy's like, yeah, I've been playing this shit for 10 years. No way. And he's just like, because I just really want to like get rank up and be like the number one player in this game. Anyway, I think he's fired or something. I don't really know what happened to this guy. I don't know. Maybe the game maker can employ him as a, um, <laughs> a something or other. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't actually say what happened to him, but... Okay. You know that story about Death Row earlier on? <laughs> That's where he's gone. <laughs> some of the some of the tweets uh, at this story were like, he should take his job more seriously. Customers won't like it if rail staff can still get paid while playing games during work, especially when it costs so much to write on the street. Guys, that is such a <laughs> Japanese comment. Yeah. Uh, anyways i hope he's okay was he doing it during breaks or while he was like walking around the train probably when he stopped and he's you know he's sitting at the the train station for a couple minutes because it's got to link up and get the gps coordinates and everything right 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 he's probably like does a little check-in he's like all right now let's go right i see he's not hurting anybody let this guy be fine depending on what he's doing right he's not got a full-on vr headset on and just like (laughs) in his own world (laughs) driving the train uh there's actually another uh story from jr that came out today as well that i wanted to read but i'll just summarize it for you guys uh basically starting i think next month they're going to do trial runs on the shinkansen on one of the lines of the shinkansen with no driver uh, fully automated all right so basically this guy's job is gone anyway so (laughs) He foresaw it. He's seen it ahead already. Dude, like, did I tell you the story? Like when I was driving on the highway and they have the guys, you know, when there's construction, they're waving the flag to tell you that there's construction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And standing yeah. next to him was a balloon guy that had like a rotating flag that was just like uh, like a little... I was like, dude, you're seeing yourself get phased out. Yeah. It's yeah. happening right in front of you. Anyway. All right, Domino's time. All right. Um, I'm not that excited about this now. It's amazing. We've got to it. Yeah. Anyway, so I actually went to Domino's recently, like day before yesterday. You went there? I went there because they don't deliver to where I live. Oh, because you live... Oh, dude, I was... We were driving to his house last night. I went to his house. And, like, in the middle of the drive, I was like, are we still in the prefecture? Like, where the fuck are we? It's not that far. It's so far. It's not. We were driving for days. It's 20 minutes. We had to refill your car, like, four times. Yeah, uh, well... <laughs> it's not very good uh, NEMPI. <laughs> uh, gas mileage. Gas mileage. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so Domino's is offering gold chopsticks to customers in Japan, if you can believe this. So they've got a new series, Ura Domino's, the Overflow series, which is a collection of eight pizzas, which have got six times the amount of toppings that you usually find. So, like, covered in whatever. Um, <laughs> and they want people to eat these pizzas with chopsticks. So there's a set of branded chopsticks included in every order. How the hell would you do that? I don't get it. Like, okay, so what this is... So, so a lot of Japanese uh, uh, brands of fast food do like these like one time a year or two time a year gluttonous specials. Right. Where for, exa- for example, they had, I think they called it the Mega Mac or like the Gig- Giga Mac is what it was called. I remember that. And yeah. it was like a Big Mac that just looked like you just copied and pasted the patties right. over and over again. And so they do these specials every now and then. And these are one of those kind of like, you know, you I know agree. whatever. Uh, and so... Just think of it as being a plate with a bunch of toppings on it that you're supposed to eat with chopsticks. Yeah. And then when you get the cho- when you get the toppings to a reasonable level, then you just take apart the plate and eat the plate. 
My God. It's what it's awful. supposed to be. I mean, I, I made a mistake with Domino's because I ordered, uh, I wasn't really looking because I don't order Domino's much because obviously like living far away, I just like randomly pressed the biggest pizza twice. Thought that'll be enough for four people. I think and you got like, the big New Yorker. It was yeah. about, like yay big. Yeah. So. They, so pizza in Japan is, guys, if you've never been here, just go around all the pizzerias and try it. It's garbage. Bad. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. So bad. But Domino's is just kind of regular Domino's. And then they have this pizza called the Big New Yorker, which is this giant pepperoni cheese pizza which is really good that's good actually yeah, it was. yeah do not buy two of them for yourself no it was for four people it's but still about four people's worth one pizza i know i know that now <laughs> to freeze it um there's a good pizza place in tokyo i've forgotten the name it's uh one of the best in the world apparently. so that's the thing is japanese pizza you either get like the actual shit from napoli or wherever the fuck it's from mm-hmm. or you get whatever they think is pizza with corn on it oh right and you're like why is there corn on the pizza well, as long as it's not got teriyaki chicken on it. Also a thing. Yeah. Awful. So there's golden chopsticks. What happens? So How the golden go? chopsticks are basically, um, you know, a way of spreading the word in social media via Twitter. Um, and there's a set of 18 carat gold chopsticks, which one person will uh, receive. And 20 other people will be able to get uh, a coupon for 10 free pizzas. So. And they got this little domino logo on these golden chopsticks i just want to carry those chopsticks around to like izakaya and i just get them out yeah. and just like excuse me let me get prepared and just like pull out your golden chopsticks and put them down well it doesn't say whether they're actually made of gold or not here it says the golden it in says the 18 afterwards. carat it says 18 carat gold but are they pure gold or not um, nobody knows they might be plated so it's just plated right so what you got to do is go to twitter and click on the tweet with the hashtag domino uh that's if you're in japan yeah but yeah, I, let me tell you, going back to software, Domino's Pizza in Japan has the best ordering app because it was made in California. It's the exact same thing as the American. It is really good. It's yeah. the exact same thing as the American app. They just like, tra- they didn't even translate most of the words. It's still mostly in English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I did uh, like that a lot. I thought this is incredibly easy to use. Right. You know. <laughs> Designed to California. All right, guys, that's been our show today. If you guys have any comments about, we talked about a lot of things. Otani, people getting hanged, which, by the way, the, the past tense of being murdered by a rope is not hung. It's hanged, which is so weird. Yeah, different to well hung. That's something else. I learned something today. I was, okay, so again, going back to the people. What, people, what, what segue is this? <laughs> going back to the people of Kam- Kagoshima, uh, the subtitles of that show are all written by uh, Alex. So they're written in British English. Yeah. You guys spell the word analog like a freaking crazy person. Analog way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to like back it up and I was like, is that actually a word? Oh my God. I know it's an education for him every time he reads it, you know, to learn proper English. So it's not proper English. It's we'll just... get you there eventually. Guys, if you guys have any comments about any of the stories that we went over today, uh, requests for stories in the future, whatever, leave us a comment in the comment section below. That's been our show today. Any last words, Mr. Alex? Uh, I'm off for a haircut now and also looking forward to Norm's video as well. So I want to tell you guys more about We'll talk about it more after he airs it, but I'm like, it's an NDA. So I can't, I'm not allowed to talk about it until it goes live. Can I say a word related to it? I think I know the word you're going to say. No. Oh, okay. I won't we say can't it talk about anything. We, can, we can't. We can't. We have to wait until afterwards. There is a there is a picture that I've been wanting to put on my Instagram for like four weeks now. I've been waiting. It's going up right when that video goes live. Right. Okay. So. All right, guys. Anyway, right, that's, been our, that. that's been our show today, guys. Um, I don't know. Have a great weekend or whatever. Is it going to go up today? All right. Have a great weekend. Bye. See you guys next week. Bye, everybody.